The Space Shuttle Challenger blasts off about an hour from now from Cape Canaveral, Florida. The Challenger is on the launch pad. It's eight crew members aboard. This is a record number, eight on a shuttle mission, seven being the most the shuttle has carried in the past. Joining five American astronauts are two West German physicists and a European Space Agency astronaut from the Netherlands. On this upcoming mission, the crew will conduct experiments in the space lab dealing with weightlessness and life sciences. CNN will carry the space shuttle's launch live at 12 noon Eastern time. Hello, I'm Tom Intier. The space shuttle Challenger is preparing to lift off exactly at noon from the Kennedy Space Center Eastern time. Joining me is Rick Chappell, a NASA scientist, and you're seeing a live picture now of the Space Shuttle Challenger. The uh, arms have been retracted, and it is sitting there ready to be fired. You can see the beanie cap, what they call the beanie cap, moving away. That's a structure which keeps the ice from forming on the top of the tank. The APUs uh, have been initiated. That controls the flight surfaces. The largest crew in uh, space history, as far as the Americans are concerned, uh, entered the orbiter about uh, two and a half hours ago. Uh, Eight-person crew, uh, both uh, from the United States, from Germany, and uh, one Dutch from astronaut from right. Holland uh, right. that are going on this seven-day space lab mission. It's going to be an extremely busy time in the seven days they have up there. They will uh, work on 76 separate experiments in the time they're up there, hopefully gathering uh, a lot of data. And uniquely on this mission, the payload will be controlled from Germany. The shuttle from Houston, the payload from Germany, Oberpfaffenhofen, which is near Munich, Germany. This uh, mission will concentrate on microgravity, which we'll talk a lot about over the next week, doing both materials processing and life sciences studies in the, in the space environment in which there's very low gravity. All right, we're at the auto sequence start, so they have less than 30 seconds now before the launch. Let's listen into mission control. We'll soon be arming the SRB ignition, hold down post, and T-0 umbilical ordinance. Minus. 13 seconds. Minus 10. We're go for main engine start. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. We have ignition and liftoff. Liftoff of Challenger and the Space Lab D1 mission. And the shuttle has cleared the tower. Houston controlling now. Roll program initiated. Uh, this 102 degree roll uh, puts the ship in the proper attitude for uh, flight downrange on the 57 degree inclination. Wings Challenger level. Houston, the cryo H2 pressure is a deucer. Roger, thank you. Uh, we're throttling down now for uh, uh, limitation of uh, dynamic pressures on the ship as we uh, pass through the sound barrier. The picture you're seeing is from some special long-range cameras that NASA has at the Kennedy Space Center that enable you to see basically up to about 50 miles away. Yeah, we'll actually get to see the separation of the solid rockets, which takes place a couple of minutes after launch. The main thrust here is coming from the solid rockets. They're the white rockets on the side of the tank. Five million pounds of thrust total out of those two rockets. And these rockets will be separating from uh, Challenger in just a few moments, and they will be on their own power then, uh, continuing on into their orbit. That's right. Once the solids separate, then you get uh, liquid fuel from the tank. So they've passed through the region of maximum pressure. And they're throttling back up the main engines again. Eight miles downrange now, and uh, still have a, a pretty good close-up picture. This trajectory carries them right up the east coast of the U.S. Probably seeing a little more cloud cover uh, on this launch because of the uh, after effects of what was Hurricane Juan and is now a uh, tropical storm. Standing by now for the uh, call of uh, PC less than 50, which is a precursor to uh, solid motor separation. Roger, PC less than 50. Okay, they've said that the pressure in the chamber of the solid rockets is low enough. Now they're separating. They fall away. They have parachutes in the nose. They'll be recovered later on. Fantastic picture there. Uh, guidance has converged as program two minutes, 20 seconds into the flight. A couple of missions ago, we had a problem just after this point where one of the uh, shuttle's main engines shut down. 
Well, there was a high, running a high temperature in one of the pumps, and the, and the engine shut down. Subsequent calls will be on time. Altitude. Uh, the main engines now should run for another six or seven minutes. Velocity five thousand. Fantastic picture there of the two solids falling away from the vehicle. And the two white dots you see in the center of your screen. Two engine power capability. Roger, two engine power. Uh, they call on time advising the crew that uh, if uh, one main engine should fail, why we could still make the uh, transatlantic abort site at Zaragoza on uh, two remaining good engines. So the Space Shuttle Challenger and the German Space Lab is on its way after a successful on-time launch of noon Eastern time from the Kennedy Space Center to begin what may be one of the biggest scientific gathering missions so far in the NASA program. The Germans, of course, paid 64 to $65 million to fly these 76 experiments that will be conducted over the next seven days. And, of course, we will have continuing coverage here on CNN throughout the mission of the science that takes place. Take two is next. Stay with CNN. The Space Shuttle Challenger is back in space again. Two, one. We have ignition and liftoff. Liftoff of Challenger and the Space Lab D-1 mission. And it blasted into orbit earlier today, carrying a record-sized crew of eight. During the voyage, they will conduct experiments in a variety of fields, including weightlessness and life science. The week-long Space Lab flight is being paid for and managed by West Germany, a first for the U.S. space program. A bomb on board an American Airlines... Up and running, the space shuttle has reached its planned orbit now, staffed with a flight crew of eight and loaded with $175 million in experiments. Tom Mentier reports. Challenger's crew of eight was almost too much to handle for the traditional NASA send-off breakfast. They stretched from one end of the table to the other with little elbow room. Two and a half hours before the scheduled noontime liftoff, the five Americans, two West Germans, and a Dutchman headed for the launch pad. The 100-ton space plane Challenger was waiting, prepared to make its ninth journey to space with the German space lab tucked into the cargo bay. Mission specialist Guy Bluford was the last astronaut to suit up. His last trip to space was on STS-8. Fourteen shuttle missions have passed since then. Bluford jokingly shook hands with Dutch astronaut Wubo Ockels as if he decided at the last minute not to board the shuttle. But as the final seconds ticked away on the countdown clock, Guy Bluford and seven other space travelers were strapped in their seats aboard Challenger. Three, two, one. We have ignition and liftoff. Liftoff of Challenger and the Space Lab D-1 mission. For the next seven days, the crew of Challenger will be working around the clock, tending to some 76 experiments in the German Space Lab. This science gathering mission is the first to be controlled by anyone but NASA. The Germans paid the American Space Agency $64 million for the privilege. But the Germans are not newcomers to space. They were the ones that first designed the rockets four decades ago that pioneered the modern-day versions now used to lift the space shuttle to orbit the Earth. 